Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, an out of control Karen decided it was her right to steal my son's wheelchair, just so her brat of a son could have a turn in it. My son ended up getting injured and I freaked out. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the video. I know this title seems wild, but trust me when I say that there was no way I could downplay what happened last week. So my son uses a wheelchair and he has since the moment that we couldn't carry him anymore. He was born with a deformed pelvis, which means he cannot work and to date there's no surgery or medication that could fix this. He does not even really mind since he is used to the wheelchair since forever, there's not really much that he misses, you know. He is also much more into video games and physics than he is into sports or things like that and also he doesn't fantasize about doing these things that he cannot do. He is 11, 12 next month and this whole fiasco only happened a week ago. I just feel I should really get it off my chest, besides, my son also likes reading these stories and said I should share what happened. So it all started on a Saturday morning in a supermarket. Me and my son were simply going shopping to stock up on some bits for the house. We usually go in the morning when it's less busy and chaotic in and around the shop. My son was looking at something down the aisle to where I was. I could still see him but I guess it wouldn't be obvious to strangers that we came together. That is when, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a woman and a boy approach him. She looked sweet so I did not think that I would have to go over but it was what she said that started it all off. Do you think my son could have a turn now? She asked, smiling down at my son. What? Turn on what? Oh sorry, I've been at this aisle for quite a while, right? My son replied, scooting away from where he was browsing, assuming that that's what she wanted. She laughed and rolled her eyes. Of course not, you idiot. Let him have a turn on your chair. After hearing this, I began storming over. What did you just call my son? Nothing, sir. Let's go, Jeremy. The Karen replied with a sweet smile, leading her son, who looked a few years older than mine, away from us. Mom, you just said I could have a turn. Jeremy wailed, tugging on his mom's arm. Oh, don't worry, you will. I heard the woman whisper, barely audible. I was slightly shaken up and wanted to leave, but my son insisted on staying. His argument being that he had not finished browsing the magazines and that he needed to get tough for the real world. Sometimes his young wiseness shocks me deeply. So we stayed. I was on edge for the next 20 minutes, not staying too far away from my son, worried the woman would come back and do something stupid. Oh hey again, I heard from behind me and there she was. Hello, I replied tight-lipped. No need to seem so emotionless. I'm just coming to ask again if Jeremy here can have a ride on your son's wheelchair. He's been using it since he came in. Surely it would be my son's turn now. Are you serious? Do you know what a wheelchair is and why people have them? I responded with a laugh. I just couldn't believe it. Dude, he'll be fine, Jeremy remarked. My son cannot walk, I said slowly, assuming the clocks would tick and they would walk away in embarrassment. However, they did not. Okay. Prop him up against a wall or something or let him sit on the floor. It's not fair that your son gets to sit down the whole time he is shopping and my son cannot. The woman crossed her arms and glared at me. Are you trying to say having a wheelchair is an advantage or something? It's not like he's choosing to need it and also if it's that much of an issue to you, just go and buy one and that way Jeremy here can play pretend all he wants. Play pretend? My son's feet are sore from walking. The woman began raising her voice. Okay, that's awesome. Did you come by car? My son asked. Yes, what is it to you? Jeremy replied. Then go and sit in the car to rest your feet. My son, bless him, was not trying to sound confrontational. I do believe he was trying to find a solution for them. How dare you be so rude? The woman shouted, eyes bulging from her head. Just because you have a disability, you think you can say what you want and everyone will allow it because of your circumstances. Well, not me. I think you're a horrible, selfish little boy and need to be taught a good lesson. I replied, you cannot talk to my son like that. I don't know who you think you are, but you're not entitled and neither is your son to the wheelchair my son uses and needs in case you forgot that detail. I can talk to you however I want. This is America and we are free speech. Besides, I really don't think your son needs it that much and you probably got it through taxpayers' money anyway. She scoffed, rolling her eyes. First of all, no we didn't. I'm sure you know how shoddy the healthcare system is. We had to pay out of pocket for this. And by the way, it was not cheap, so it's not to be treated like a toy. I remarked, standing between her and my son, who had rolled a little further away. Okay, we will see. The Karen replied with a smirk towards her son, who smirked back. I really did not have a good feeling about this. They walked off and I decided that it was time to leave. 
My son resisted slightly, but I was not having it. I knew they were up to something, and I did not want my son to have to go through anything. We quickly went to the tills and paid for what we had. We happened to be being served by the manager of the branch, so I told her about what happened. She apologized and said that they have cameras with speech detection and in such a quiet time, what they said probably picked up. So I gave her my email and she said she would send me the footage in case I needed to go further with a report or anything like that. We thanked her and began leaving. Wait dad, I forgot to pick up that magazine I was looking at. It will be quick, I promise. My son said. Okay, fine, we're gonna be quick though. I replied and we began walking back to the right aisle. I was slightly tensed that something might happen and then it did. Get him! I heard yell from behind and the woman rushed forward and grabbed the back wheels of my son's wheelchair, pulling it backwards so he fell out and onto the floor, crashing down with a sickening thud. What is wrong with you? I yelled in anger at the woman, who was laughing. I stood and before I could do anything, she hit me over the head. She quickly ran off with the wheelchair before her son jumped in it and started rolling around, all the while laughing. His mom then shimmied him away and along a different aisle. I stayed to take care of my son who had a badly bleeding nose and was beginning to cry. We saw, security is on it. I heard someone speak and looked up to see the manager and a few other employees rush over to help. One of them was carrying a first aid kit and was helping clean up my kit, another handed him a donut which very quickly made my son forget that he was injured. A few minutes later we heard yelling throughout the otherwise silent store. Get off me, mom help! Excuse me, get your filthy hands off my son. Are you trying to remove him from his wheelchair? That's a hate crime. There were multiple other remarks and then I heard someone throw a punch and then security called the cops. The son and mother attempted to make a dash for the door, but at that point I ran over and with all the anger left in me I knocked her out cold. Her son did not dare to continue his fleeing attempt and the cops arrived soon after. The manager had gone off and got the laptop with the CCTV footage on it, showing it to the cops who agreed immediately to take the pair away. My son of course got his wheelchair back and I pressed charges. Sometime later we found out that Karen ended up behind bars for a substantial amount of time. We don't know what happened to the son, he is a minor so they could not disclose anything. But we also filed a restraining order against a woman. When she is out of jail, we don't want anything to do with her in the future. And here, ripe stars, I hope this entitled Karen is being taught a lesson in jail and that she will never assault any people, especially disabled people, again. Either way, the next one is a petty revenge story. My neighbor's son, Garth, graduated college about this time last year and got his first full-time career job at a company. He is in the IT department of a branch office and does IT things. Total number of employees at this office is around 20, some are sales, some work in the office and Karen is the office manager. When Garth first started there were three IT people. They had an office in the basement away from the rest of the employees. This suited Garth just fine, he is a quiet introverted young man. Highly intelligent but he is not a social person. Would rather spend his time off gaming than live interactions, as you can imagine he is not a big kid, maybe a buck fifty, after eating a big steak for dinner. The two other IT people eventually move on to other jobs and corporate does not replace them. Now Garth has three times to work without receiving a raise. Garth voices his concerns to Karen about workload on callouts and he gets the standard feeble corporate responses and condescending lecture. I don't know why he didn't quit then, but he stuck it out hoping to eventually be recognized for his worth etc. Whenever I spoke with him he would say how bad it was working for Karen, but his saving grace was that he was in his solitary office most of the day and did not have much contact with her. Until one day back in February. He got a phone call from Karen telling him to come upstairs. Upon arriving, he is directed to start moving furniture around. Garth takes a look around and tells Karen his job does not call for moving heavy objects. Karen gets loud and calls his manhood into question in front of everyone, but Garth does not budge. Life changed for Garth after that, Karen had decided to make work miserable for him. She started repeatedly writing him up for whatever she could think up, but here comes the petty revenge. So Garth starts snooping and discovers that Karen is having an affair with a married co-worker. 
Their work phones are synced up to the computer system, which Garth has access to. Garth has created a mass corporate email with various screenshots of the sexting. He rigged it to be sent out today from her own email account. The beauty of it all? Garth walked in Friday and tendered his resignation to corporate HR. He left his ID card and whatever else on Karen's desk. Karen made a big deal of shouting to Garth as he was leaving to not let the door hit him in the ass on the way out. When the email is sent out, they may well suspect that Garth was the perpetrator, but they will never be able to prove it. I can only hope Garth's revenge is sweet and spectacular. And yeah, ripe stars, if you have watched until here, I would very much appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and maybe even like the video, since that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. This is not my story, but my friend Adam's. Adam is a retired police officer, and this takes place in the mid-90s, back when Adam was a beat cop, maybe a year or two into his service. At the time this story takes place, a firebug had targeted several businesses over the course of a three-month period. The fires were put out, but they were getting bigger and bigger, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Everyone was on edge, and the police were patrolling the area every night to try and catch Mr. Firebug. On this particular night in the middle of February, Adam and his partner, Rick, drew the short stick and thus were assigned to patrol part of the area. While on patrol, he notices a classic Mercedes-Benz pulling up to a house and a familiar lady dressed in a thick fur coat steps out. He groans, it's the wife of a local business owner that every officer in town have had the displeasure to ticket for various parking and traffic violations. It would have been fine if she were a nice lady or something, but no, her three default sentences were, don't you know who I am? Where's your manager supervisor? And I will have your job. Seriously. She was a Karen before Karens were even a thing. Rick points out to Adam that Karen had parked right by a fire hydrant. Par for the course, Adam gets ready and steps out of the squad car. Good evening, Mrs. Entitled, ma'am, Adam said. What are you doing here? Karen bellowed. Adam guessed that that is the Karen version of the word hello. Working the beat. Do you know who you park next to a fire hydrant? So? Karen said. I'm suggesting you move it before I write you a ticket. I'm not in the mood for extra paperwork tonight. Listen, you need to leave my car alone. Or I will have your job. With that, Karen storms off to the house, goes inside and slams the door. Adam thought, if you say so? And proceeded to check the outside of the car for any more violations and wishing that being a Karen was a federal offense. As he is putting the ticket under the windshield wiper, the call everyone's been dreading comes on the radio. A fire alarm has been triggered, the address right across the street. Adam looks over at the building and can see a faint orange glow in the windows on the second floor. He reports the glow, he and Rick get ready in case Mr. Firebug decides to cross their path. Several officers arrive and set a perimeter around the building as the glow gets brighter and brighter. Unfortunately, by the time the fire department gets there, flashover happens and all the windows on the second floor get blown out. It was so hot that Adam felt sweat form on his face. The fire department need to get the hoses set up, but Karen's car is in the way. Using safety hammers, they break the windows and run the hoses through, getting everything set up in record time. During all of the chaos, Karen comes out and she sounds like a banshee that had swallowed an air raid siren. She runs over and tries unhooking the hose from the hydrant. What are you doing? My car is ruined! It took two officers to restrain her and bark at her to go get inside and let everyone do their jobs. She actually listened and returned inside. Adam spent the rest of his shift helping with the fire and investigation. It was close to dawn when he returned to the station to finish up. All he wanted was to go home and crawl into bed. That is when his supervisor calls Rick and him over and reports that Karen reported several thousand dollars worth of damage. Not only had her windows been broken, but water had gotten in and froze because it was, again, the middle of February. The supervisor asked them what happened and they reported everything. Fortunately, the dash cam caught a recording of the event. The supervisor shook her head, laughed and said, well, you had nothing to do with the car getting damaged, so I consider this closed. A few weeks later, they caught the firebug, a different business owner who was trying to commit insurance fraud. He figured that if several other buildings caught fire, nobody would think he was responsible for burning down his own business. Unfortunately, Karen never did seem to learn her lesson, so she was back to racking up tickets and being a thorn in the police's sight. She did have to pay for the damages and the ticket Adam gave her. 
And the next one is an Am I the A-hole story. I, 29 male, have a wife who is 6 months pregnant. She does not work, she wants to be a stay-at-home mom while I work, which is completely fine. Recently though, her hormones, or at least I hope it's the hormones, and have been very angry towards me, I've been trying to help her through it all and give her any craving she wants, even going out at 1 in the morning to get her some lemon juice. The other day, I had a long day at work and was very tired and I just wanted to go home and sleep. When I got home, my wife greeted me and then asked me if I would bake her a cookie cake that she's been craving because she likes how I make it. I apologized to her saying that I'm tired and would make it for her tomorrow when I come back home from work and bring her some Panda Express. She started saying that she is the one who is pregnant and that I should not be tired. I did not answer her, I was tired and went upstairs to sleep but she kept yelling at me that she is craving cookie cake and she wants it now so I told her to stop being a brat and wait for tomorrow. She slammed the door on me and went downstairs. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? And yeah ripe stars let me know in the comments what you think is OP the a-hole here or not? Reddit said, not the a-hole, yeah she's having a kid and growing a baby, but you also get to sleep too. She doesn't get to yell when her every craving is not instantly granted. You're not a genie. Comment number two, not the a-hole, she is pregnant, not in a vegetative state, she can handle things by herself and even more so if she is still in the second trimester, invalidating you and your effort is a-holery if she becomes more demanding over time then you definitely need to have a sit down with her. Comment number three, not the a-hole, you get to be tired as well and being six months pregnant without complications and any other obligations throughout the day, she should be able to make her own cookie cake. Being pregnant is no excuse for being an entitled a-hole. Women should not use pregnancy as an excuse to do absolutely nothing and demand everything from their husbands or boyfriends. Of course a pregnancy with complications is a different story. For your info though, I'm a woman myself and have been pregnant three times. The amount of times I made ridiculous requests? Zero. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. This one is titled No More Hit and Runs. So I never knew about this community until now so I'm happy to share my story. This happened a few years ago. So my fiancé at the time, now wife, were driving around looking for dresses for her bridemaids to wear for the wedding. We had been going from place to place looking for something she liked but no luck. We had just finished leaving David's bridal and were leaving the plaza. It had been raining a lot so the roads were slick. As I reached the intersection of where the plaza met the road to turn out, another car came turning in. Unfortunately, he did not brake soon enough and skidded into the front end of the driver's side. Thankfully, everyone was okay, we got out of our cars and looked at the damage. His car, of course, was completely unharmed and mine had a minor dent. He looked about 45-ish and had his son in the car with him. We then exchanged names and phone numbers and he let me know that he was on the way to work and I told him we were just wedding shopping. I was 22 at the time and very naive as to what to do in the case of an accident. He told me that we both seem pretty busy and that we should just handle it ourselves since we were both busy. We did not call the police, which was my mistake, and he told me to get the damage looked at to see what it would cost. I took the car in two days later and they quoted me $1,100 for the bumper to be replaced. I texted him and he told me he will be getting scholarships in two months and when he goes back to school and he would be able to pay me in cash then. I again naively told him that would be fine. A week later I followed up with him about another estimate I got which was lower than the original, 900 bucks, but I got no response. I texted him again and again for the next few days and nothing. At this point I realized he had bailed. I came up with a plan to find him, all I had was his name, a now useless phone number and a general area of where he worked. I searched for him on Facebook and was pretty sure I found him. I searched under his family members and saw what looked to be like his son. My soon-to-be sister-in-law was 16 and looked about the same age as his son. I decided to go off full-on sleuth and go undercover. I used her Facebook and changed her last name to match theirs. I then messaged the son and told him that I thought we might be cousins. I asked him some questions about his dad, like name and his job and told him that my mom said I have an uncle down there by that name and worked at this guitar shop. 
He answered, yes, that was his dad's name and told me the name of the place where his dad worked. I was so relieved I was making progress. The next day I drove back up near the accident and found where the man worked. I found his car and took pictures of his license plate. I then took all the info I had and went to the courthouse. I filled out paperwork and handed it to the clerk. The clerk told me they could either mail the form to his work address or if I paid 25 bucks I could have an officer hand deliver it. Of course, I paid the 25 bucks just to embarrass him at his place of work. A few weeks later, we were summoned to the court to see if we could work things out before going to an actual hearing. He showed up and we sat down with a mediator. She explained everything to all of us. I told him I didn't want to do this, but he stopped responding. He replied that his phone was stolen, so he had to get a new one. In my mind, a phone being stolen does not equal changing your phone number. I knew he was lying. The moderator asked him to step outside. She talked to us and told us not to trust him because his story did not make sense. The mediator invited him back inside and we read over the terms I listed in the court documents. He was to pay $2,400. I charged him the original replacement cost, gas from driving back and forth, my time for doing all this work and extra just for being an a-hole. He said he would pay but did not like that I went to his job and took pictures of his car. I replied I did not like that he hit my car. A few months later he paid the full amount in cash and had to pay for our court costs as well. I sold the damaged car and took the cash he gave me to buy another car fully in cash. All in all I benefited from it but next time I will just call the cops and save myself the headache. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.